हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू सीक्रेट हार्ट हाई स्कूल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इन साइंस वन चैप्टर इलेवन रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ लाइट पार्ट टू टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट स्पेरिकल मिरर इन द इन द लास्ट पार्ट वी हैड स्टडीड अबाउट प्लेन मिरर You must have seen in the mirrors, or you must have seen the mirrors displayed in the laughing chamber in a fair. Your face appears distorted in these mirrors. Why does this happen? These mirrors are different from the mirrors we have at home. They are curved, so the images formed by curved mirrors are different from those formed by plain mirrors. Because of this, we do not see the familiar images in these mirrors. in case of the rear view mirrors in cars which enable drivers to see the vehicles coming from behind are curved mirrors try this if we cut a rubber ball into two parts we can see that each of the two parts has two types of surfaces generally spherical mirrors are part of a hollow glass sphere The inner or outer surface of this part is coated with a shiny substance to produce a spherical mirror. Reflection of light takes place either from its outer or inner surface. Thus, there are two types of spherical mirrors, as you can see: concave mirror. If the mirror, if the inner surface of the spherical mirror is the reflecting surface, then it is called a concave mirror. If the outer surface of the spherical mirror is the reflecting surface, then it is called a convex mirror. Now we shall see few terms related to spherical mirrors. Pole. The center of the mirror surface is called its pole. Center of curvature. the center of the sphere of which the mirror is a part is called the center of curvature of the mirror radius of curvature the radius of the sphere of which the mirror is a part is called radius of curvature of the mirror principal axis the straight line passing through the pole and center of curvature of the mirror is called its principal axis principal focus Incident rays which are parallel to the principal axis of a concave mirror after reflection from the mirror they meet at a particular point in front of the mirror on the principal axis and this point is called the principal focus of the concave mirror which is marked by the letter f but in case of a convex mirror incident rays parallel to the principal axis after reflection appear to come from a particular point behind the mirror lying along the principal axis and this point is called the principal focus of the convex mirror focal length the distance between the pole and the principal focus of the mirror is called the focal length the dis- this distance is half of the radius of curvature of the mirror now we shall see images formed by a concave mirror now we shall do a a particular uh, activity take the cardboard box large enough to hold the candle or lamp cut off one side and place the candle inside cut out an arrow shaped slit from one side so that we get an arrow shaped light source make a screen of size 20 cm to 30 cm by sticking a white paper on the cardboard sheet and set it up vertically with the help of the wooden block fix the mirror vertically on the other cardboard box by making a slit on its top surface place the screen near a window and place the mirror in front of it such that the image of the sun or some far far away object forms clearly on the screen measure the distance between the screen and the mirror in this situation and this is the focal length of the mirror now set up the experiment in a dark room place the mirror near the zero mark on the meter scale 
place the screen in front of it and place the light source in between the two so that the distance between the mirror and the source is a little more than the focal length of the mirror. Obtain a clear image of the source on the screen by moving the screen along the meter scale and perpendicular to it. The image will be inverted and larger than the source as the object as the image is obtained on the screen. It is a real image that you can see in the second picture. Now move the source away from the mirror so that the distance between the two is greater than the twice the focal length of the mirror. Get a clear image on the screen by moving it towards the mirror. This image, the image is inverted smaller than the object and real. Now we can study the images produced by spherical mirrors by drawing ray diagrams. A ray diagram is the depiction of the path taken by light rays to draw a ray diagram. We use following rules which are based on the laws of reflection of, of light. The first rule states if an incident ray is parallel to the principal axis then the reflected ray passes through the principal focus. Rule number 2 states if an incident ray passes through the principal focus of the mirror, the reflector ray is parallel to the principal axis. Rule number 3 states if an incident ray passes through the center of curvature of the mirror, the reflector ray traces the same path back. Now we shall see images formed by a concave mirror with the help of ray diagram. Now in the first picture you see that the position of the object is placed between pole and focus. The position of the image is formed behind the mirror. The nature of the image is erect virtual and the size of the image is magnified. Now in the second picture the position of the object is at the focus. The position of the image is at infinity. The nature of the image is inverted real and the size of the image is very large. Now in the third picture you can see the position of the object is between the focus and the center of curvature. The position of the image is beyond the center of curvature. The nature of the image is inverted real and the size of the image is magnified. In the fourth picture, the position of the object is at the center of curvature. The position of the image is also at the center of the curvature. So the nature of the image is inverted real and the size of the image is same as the size of the object. In the next picture you can see the position of the object is beyond the center of curvature. The position of the image is formed between the center of curvature and focus. The nature of the image is inverted real and the size of the image is diminished. Now we shall see the images formed by a convex mirror with the help of a diagram. Now as you can see in the figure an object is kept in front of a convex mirror. Incident rays starting from the object traveling parallel to the axis going towards the center of curvature. It is clear that the image is smaller than the object and it is formed behind the mirror and erect as the reflected rays do not actually cross one another. So the image is a virtual image. So you can say that the nature of the image formed by a convex mirror does not depend on the distance of the object from the mirror. These images are always virtual, smaller than the object and it is situated behind the mirror. So we can say that a concave mirror is also called as focusing mirror. This is because a parallel rays get focused after reflection in this mirror. The size of the 
image produced by these mirrors can be larger or smaller than the objects depending upon the distance of the object from the mirror. A convex mirror is also called as a dispersing mirror. This is because parallel incident rays get dispersed after reflection in this mirror. The size of the images produced by these mirrors is always smaller than the size of the object. So when ray, light rays collect at a point after reflection from a spherical mirror, they are said to be converged there. When we want a bright, when we want to bring light rays together at a point, a converging, converging light beam is used. Doctors use such a beam to converge light on a tooth, ear, nose, etc. Equipments using solar energy also use converging light. When the light rays starting from a point spread out after reflection by a spherical mirror, light is said to have diverged. And when we want light rays to spread out from a source, a divergent beam is used as, for example, in street lamps. Now we shall see Cartesian sign convention. According to the Cartesian sign convention, the pole of the mirror is taken as the origin. The principal axis is taken as the x-axis of the frame of reference. The sign conventions are as follows. First one, the object is always kept on the left of the mirror. All distance parallel to this principal axis are measured from the pole of the mirror. The second convention rule is all distances measure, measured towards the right of the pole are taken to be positive while those measured towards the left are taken to be negative. Third, distances measured vertically upward from the principal axis are taken to be positive. Distance measured vertically downwards from the principal axis are taken to be negative. The focal length of a concave mirror is negative while that of a convex mirror is positive. Next we shall see mirror formula and magnification. We get the correct values of distances by using, by using the Cartesian sign convention. The object distance taken to be as u which is the distance of the object from the pole while the image distance re represented by v is the distance of the image from the pole. The relationship between the object distance, image distance and the focal length is called mirror formula that is 1 upon v plus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f and this formula is valid for all spherical mirrors for all positional objects under all circumstances. Next magnification. The magnification due to, a, due to a spherical mirror is given by the ratio of the height of the image to the height of the object. This tells us how large the image is as compared to the object. So we can represent magnification as height of the image upon height of the object or h2 upon h1. From this we can it can be shown that m is equal to minus v upon u. As the object is always kept above the principal axis, its height is always taken to be positive. For virtual images, the height is positive while for real images, it is negative. As the object is kept on the left of the mirror, its distance u is always negative. Thank you children. Hope so. You have understood the topic. So we have covered up plane mirror and spherical mirror.